In this lesson, we're examining three methods of ropo, a jōjutsu kata from the Kukishin Ryu. Our practice of each of these three methods includes five variations on footwork. Our first method of ropo strikes to the legs, to the temple, to the top of the head, and then through the opponent's guard. In this method, we're using a two-handed ashibarai as our first strike, transitioning the jo behind the back into kasumi uchi, rotating the jo into tento uchi, and finishing with a ski. Variations on footwork include advancing with the ski, retreating with the ski, entering kiza with the ski, leaping forward with the ski, and using the behind body transition as a point to pause or adjust the direction of our next strike. While training, keep in mind the opponent who is reacting to your strikes. Our strikes force the opponent to move and crowd the opponent's evasions. The first strike, the ashibarai, moves the opponent. The transition behind the back provides a kamai from which we might more easily move and strike in multiple directions. We may wait here for the right time to strike, or strike immediately from the transition. The tento uchi chases the opponent's reception, overtaking their movement with the ski. Our second method of ropo uses a one-handed opening strike. This variation can be useful for striking from natural posture. Regardless of starting posture, it's important to deliver the first strike completely and not just swing the jo toward the back. Practice pausing or not pausing during the behind body transition, as well as advancing, retreating, and entering hiza with the ski. Our third method of ropo varies the height of the first strike and uses a teardrop-shaped tento uchi, or the third strike in the sequence. For this tento uchi, our back hand slides up the jo before turning palm up to deliver the strike. Practice advancing with the ski, retreating with the ski, entering kiza with the ski, and using the behind body transition as a point to pause and or adjust the direction of your attack keeping in mind the movement of the opponent. Note how this method of ropo creates a sort of corral for the opponent, so as to overwhelm their structure before the ski is delivered. The striking path in this sequence is not linear, even when our movement appears to be. In this section, we'll look at common mistakes and how to fix them. 
The first strike must be a complete strike. Note the hand movement on the Joe that along with hip movement drives the strike. A common mistake is to focus on the transition behind the shoulders, swinging the Joe and releasing one hand too early. Not only does this mistake miss the first strike, it prevents the body from being in the correct position for the next transition. A proper ashibarai structures the body for the behind body transition, allowing you to retract the strike behind the body while setting the weight toward the back of your structure. To help learn this structure, try glancing behind you as the Joe transitions behind your shoulders. Not only will this practice create the straight posture of the transition, by training it you will develop the ability to look around you while wielding a Joe. Exit the transition through a strike to the temple. Vertical or diagonal strikes reach the target faster than large horizontal arcs. Strike again with Tento Uchi. Finish the sequence with the ski. This Tento Uchi is driven by sliding the back hand toward the front hand and turning the rear hand palm up to strike with the forward end of the Jo, which does not change during the strike. The Tento Uchi can also be delivered by lifting the backhand and turning the palm toward the opponent, striking with the back end of the Joe. This Tento Uchi can deliver a second strike as it rotates. A versatility that allows you to strike with the first movement, with the second movement, or with both movements. Alternatively, the second movement of the Joe can become a retraction that feeds the next strike such as the ski at the end of this kata. Your challenge for this particular lesson is to complete no less than 200 repetitions of Ropo in any of the styles shown here. I suggest starting with sets of 50 until you have completed at least 100 repetitions of one of the methods before moving on to the other two. Have fun!